Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you the Yixin E010 from Banggood. I'll be flying it with the Tyrannus 9XD Plus as well as the Turnigy 9XR Pro. I'll be flying it with the 4-in-1 uh, multi-protocol module from Banggood as well which supports uh, the uh, E010 protocol. I'll also show you what I did to use different types of batteries, uh, more common style of batteries. The batteries that it comes with has this uh, unique kind of connector to it and I think it's the same type of connector that was found in the WL Toys V911 micro helicopter and I decided to use some more some more of these common battery connectors I believe these are micro T low C connectors and most of my Hudson SEMA you know pretty much every micro quadcopter uses it and it basically involves just soldering a lead to it and then this way you can uh, use the batteries that you want to use and these since these are more common I really don't want to start buying you know another type of battery to use with this uh, quadcopter. I'm really not getting a bother with the included uh, remote control because I think they're really bad but you know that's why you want to get something like a Tyrannus or a, a 9XR Pro or you know another transmitter to use with your quadcopter and it's you know because you can do so much more stuff and uh, in terms of the uh, protocol that it uses it uses the MJXQ protocol with a sub protocol of the E010 and um, the 4-in-1 module obviously fits on the back of the Tyrannus here and uh, that's what is used to control it. I also provide a link to the setup file for the uh, E010 for the Tyrannus as well as the uh, Turnigy 9 xr Pro in the description. This way you can just uh, load it up without uh, having to manually program it yourself. And to import a model for uh, the Tranus, it's just as simple as basically looking for an empty slot and then holding down the enter button and then selecting restore model uh, once you have the bin file copied to your micro SD card. And then you go through and just select the, the bin file that uh, that is the uh, configuration for the E010. So to use the Micro T Low C style of battery connectors, you're gonna have to solder a lead to it. And it, there's basically two contact points here that you need to solder to. And I'm gonna show you a little video clip on how to do it. Uh, I'm using a battery power soldering iron, which doesn't have a lot of heat. So you don't need something too powerful. It's like, I think it's like 10 watts or six watts or something like that. It's very, it's very minimal. And you just want to pre-tin the connections a little bit, just to give it a little bit more solder. And then it's just a matter of uh, hooking it up. And as you can see on the left side, that is the positive. And then on the right side is the negative. So you want to make sure you have that correct. And that's all it really takes really to, um, uh, to solder the uh, connector to it. And this way you can actually use both type of batteries you can use the Micro T Low C style as well as the on um, the already included type of batteries because you're not removing the connector itself, so you're just adding on to it. Here I'm just plugging a battery that is from my Hubson X4, and you'll see that it powers up just fine. Uh, I think the maximum you can probably put is like 300 milliamp battery because any more you'll probably be too heavy and won't be able to lift it up. So I'm going to fly the uh, E010 with the Tyrannus 9XD Plus. It's uh, my favorite transmitter at the moment and uh, I'm going to show you how I bind it. Uh, basically plug it up and then turn it on. Uh, once you enable the auto bind option in your transmitter, it should automatically uh, connect and bind with it. Next I'll show you uh, the E010 with the Turnigy 9XR Pro. Uh, basically, it uses the MJXQ protocol. Uh, we're just going to go in here and just show you. I'm going to go down to the protocol section of this uh, transmitter. And you can see that it says MJXQ. It's a little blurry. My camera kind of auto-focused out of there. But it's the MJXQ protocol with a sub-protocol E010. And same thing in terms of binding it. I'm just going to hook up the battery and then turn it on. It will automatically bind to it because I did enable the auto bind option and uh, it works the same way as the Tyrannus. 
Uh, it feels a little different because the gimbals on the Turnigian XR Pro is a is not as good. It's just got a shorter throw, but um, it's still but much better than the stock radio. So highly recommend it if you're looking for a budget radio. Look at the Turn G9 XR Pro with the 401 module. And I'm just going to do a little bit of flying around the house, uh, around the apartment here, and you'll see how maneuverable it is. It is uh, very, very nice to fly and quite fun. So the setup file for the Turn G9 XR Pro will also be available in the, the description. You can download it as well and load it onto your Turn G9 XR Pro, granted that you have the 401 multi module. Well, as you're running as uh, uh, with uh, ER Sky 9X firmware, and you should be good to go. I'll have that in the description, and it's just a matter of importing it to your um, into your transmitter if you do not want to uh, program one manually. The E010 is definitely one of the, the better quadcopters that I have. It's really fun to fly. It's very stable and uh, easy to control. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm using a Tyrannus. But uh, it is very fun and maneuverable. I, I compare that to, with say, a uh, JJRC 1000A. Uh, this one has a slight edge in that it feels a little bit, um, feels a lot better, I think, in terms of its control. And I have a blast with it since it's so small. It's perfect for flying around the office or in a very confined space. And I really, really like it. In fact, I'm probably going to pick up a few more of these and uh, some spare parts and molders. So yeah, this is a definite uh, winner if you're looking for a very easy to fly quadcopter around the house. Another thing I did was I installed a camera onto the uh, to the quadcopter itself. This camera is the uh, FX798T I think and it only weighs about 4.5 to 5 grams so it doesn't really bog down the quadcopter too much. I 3D printed a mount for it and it's just held in place with a rubber band. I also soldered the power directly to the quadcopter. This is to save a little bit on the weight. The cable was actually too long and it probably would have added a few more grams to it. And with a quadcopter of this size, you want to minimize the weight as much as possible. So the camera is really small and very lightweight. And it's held in just with a rubber band, like I said, and it doesn't move at all. Uh, if you need, I'll provide a link to the, the mount that in the description that you could print off. I didn't design it myself, somebody else did, so they can take credit for that. But um, I didn't have any screws so I used a rubber band and it's held in there pretty pretty good and uh, doesn't move or anything like that so um, that's good enough for me. Now I'm going to fly around the, the apartment using the FEV camera just to give you an idea of what it's like. Um, basically I'm filming the, the monitor itself so it's going to be a little bit pixelated but you get the idea. Using a pair of goggles or, or a monitor, uh, you can have a lot of fun just flying around the house. Um, I, I do this at my office. Uh, uh, basically around the apartment and it's a real blast to, to play with and it does get a little bit you know you do have to get used to it a little bit and you know know where your boundaries are uh, when looking through the, um, the camera itself but it does a pretty good job it's pretty stable the FX 798T uh, FPV camera I'm using is a little bit on the pricey side I think it's like uh, 35 or 40 dollars um, there are cheaper ones from Ishin the TX01 or the TX02, I think they're about $20. So if you're looking for an FPV camera that is roughly the same size, take a look at those. They work just as good. The E010 being about $15 and the Ishin uh, camera being about another $20 or so. You're looking at a really cost-effective way of mimicking the Tiny Whoop or the uh, Inductrix F FPV, which goes for a lot more than that.
Anyways, that's it for this video. If you like what you see, comment, like, or subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.